Hello one and all, this is so Lordy. James Bullock, once again, with another Just video game first reaction. impressions. This time around, Forspoken, for the PlayStation 5 and PC. Forspoken is an action-adventure RPG made by Square Enix, developed by Luminous Productions, and it is, as I noted in my demo review, a very unique and downright polarizing experience. And I'll get this out of the way immediately because one of the biggest reasons for that polarization when it comes to the fan base or the lack thereof is the dialogue and the interactions. Because you play as Frey. Initially, you see her as a homeless individual living in New York who is put in a terrible situation, trying to survive, trying to live, that sees her abused by gang members and on the opposite end of the spectrum in her attempt to get away from them hilariously so getting get away back? as someone's One holding a gun and refuses to shoot her. But thankfully they do not shoot her because then we would not have a game at all. Yes. Instead she is pulled into this mystical realm known as Athia, which is suffering from a disease that not only has inflicted the civilization and society but also the entire world known as what Freyd dubs the break. And the break causes this almost metallic rock-like infection on anything that it touches and decays it both mentally and physically though when it comes to the animals and the enemies that you have to face the break actually empowers them and makes them more vicious and ferocious now in between getting from new york to athia frey encounters a bracelet that talks to her and she dubs it cuff now one of the biggest things and one of the biggest drawbacks when it comes to this game from a review and an online perspective. I know a lot of you that are watching this know about the backlash that the dialogue, the quote unquote cringe interactions between Frey and Cuff. And I will say, I didn't have that big of a problem with it when it came to mostly the cutscenes and the general interactions. But when it comes to traversing the world and the various back and forth banter between the two, it not only gets grading after a while, it gets incredibly repetitive. Thankfully, in the options, you can turn down the banter, but if you're just playing it like I did, just have it set up normally, don't really mess or adjust with a lot of the options, and just let the game play out as it should and see how it feels, you will notice very early on that they will repeat dialogue interactions. They will repeat segments. And then there are times where it'll be odd because I've noticed it feels like it's a disjointed conversation where Cuff will say something and Frey will react to it in a manner that that's not necessarily connected to what Cuff said. Honestly, and reasonably asking, are you okay? And she just lets in on him, like, shut the F up. Uh, it's just like, it's so weird. The interaction between the two at times where one conversation will sound like it's actually supposed to happen and another will be so randomly pieced together that it doesn't make sense why they're talking the way they are to each other. Now since the break has affected humanity and a majority of the humans that you interact with are actually zombie-like creatures that you have to put down, there aren't a lot of NPCs that you interact with and the majority that you do interact with are very stoic very robotic. It feels like something from an early build from a early PlayStation 4 game in terms of the way the characters interact, the way the characters are talking, and generally just the way the characters are presented, especially when it comes to the NPCs. There's not a natural feel when it comes to the characters' presentation. Beyond Frey to a certain extent, she is understandably upset about being pulled into this random world and cannot get back home. So of course she's a little bit more distressed than the majority of the people that are around her. She is a little bit more frantic and a little bit more abrasive. And it's understandable. But a majority of the other characters feel almost typecast and don't have the ability to grow on you because a lot of them are introduced incredibly quickly. They don't have any real backstory or given a chance to emphasize their struggle especially in this destroyed decaying world before you're off to do your next adventure and just like the dialogue presentation and the general world itself is the gameplay itself that is a mixed bag when you're able to parkour with the abilities to sprint and jump and shimmy and zip around the world as you get the zip ability to jump onto different ledges by pretty much using a tether after the fourth chapter 
you realize just how fun it is to traverse around the world of Athia. Unfortunately, the world itself is very barren. There are some towns that you can liberate, there are items and collectibles you can pick up, and of course there are a plethora of enemies at various points that you can defeat. But beyond that, there is nothing really interesting about the various worlds of Athia. What is interesting is when you get into the combat. And for me, personally, I have enjoyed the combat a lot, even though there are some significant flaws, especially when it comes to the fact that the enemy difficulty is rooted not in strategy, not in enemy AI that is intelligent and learns from what the character or the player is doing, but from numbers. There will be times where you fight a horde of, say, ram-like creatures that you cannot really prepare yourself for, you have to dodge frequently because they will ram you before you even recognize that they're coming your way because usually they're off screen or they're coming right at you and they have no wind up, no real build up, they just ram you and will knock you into the air or knock you down and leave you prone to be hit over and over again. But a majority of the time you're placed with a certain amount of enemies that are easily dispatched and with Frey having various abilities rooted in elementals you will have to determine what elemental works for you when it comes to facing certain enemies. You have to learn what these enemies are vulnerable to. But unfortunately, what I found out is the fact that certain elementals aren't unlocked immediately. So there will be enemies that are resistant to certain elementals, which are the only ones that you have in your repertoire because depending on how far you are into the story, you only have the burst, which is the wind-based damage or you may just have the fire based damage and certain enemies are invulnerable to that so that means that depending on what enemies you're fighting you will have to either switch it up or have to use a lot of your magic in terms of just play time and trying to break down their resistances instead of giving the player enough tools to mix and match very similar to say Ghost of Tsushima where you can switch styles and learn pretty much in a line when you get these styles. What enemies are susceptible to these styles? What enemies are susceptible to these elements? And allow the player to learn from that. There is a lot to explore in Athi, as I mentioned, there are towns to liberate and enemies to take care of. There are also some hidden dungeons that are very, very underwhelming. Mostly because of the bosses that are at the end of these dungeons. I was surprised because they are some gigantic creatures and utilizing pretty much the level one abilities when it comes to just randomly shooting energy or burst to cave their health so fast that it really wasn't a struggle to beat these enemies and this is on normal difficulty there are a few times i felt under level or overwhelmed until about the end of the fourth chapter and then they kind of give you a difficulty curve that comes out of nowhere which interestingly enough, the story bosses and the story missions are actually easier than some of the random encounters that you'll face when just traveling around Athia. But thankfully, you usually have the ability to run away if you feel like you're overwhelmed. They give you that parkour system that gives you a lot of freedom when it comes to deciding whether or not you want to fight. Technically, the game is also a mixed bag. Beyond the obvious frame rate drops that will happen randomly, I've had moments where I'll be in the middle of a fight and then all of a sudden the frame rate will drop to nothing. I was simply moving around a small area and the frame rate dropped to a zero after the game was about to crash. There is to me some lighting problems. I think that especially in the third to fourth chapters where you're getting more into the depths of the world where you're leading up to a big boss battle, that area is very muted but it also isn't well lit and there will be sometimes when you exit a building you get this That's big it. blast of blinding white light that is overwhelming to the eyes and the senses that i don't understand why this is a thing enemies as i noted aren't the smartest but they also can be pretty dumb in terms of technical issues they can get caught into buildings and rocks or I had one enemy that was stuck in a doorway. With all of that being said, thankfully I haven't had any game breaking bugs or major glitches or hard crashes that would make me think that this is not the most stable game in the world, but it's definitely not the best optimized game. 
Overall, Forspoken is pretty much what I expected coming off of the demo. It's a solid open world action adventure RPG experience with some questionable dialogue and story choices in terms of presentation. A main character that is getting a lot more flack than she deserves considering her situation, but I can also understand why people aren't too fond of her and Cuff as a duo. The gameplay is also a mixed bag. When it works, it is exhilarating, it is fun. When it doesn't, when you have stupid AI, when you have pretty mundane AI, when you have powers that sometimes are interrupted because of the animations not fully being able to be played out while being hit, it definitely feels underwhelming. Forspoken is one of those games that feels like it came out at the perfect time. It came out right at the beginning of the year so people can forget about it, it can go on sale eventually, and then people will think, oh hey, I remember that that game came out, let me give it a try at a cheaper price than the original asking price of $70. If you're into these type of games, if you want to give it a try, if you played the demo and did enjoy the demo, I still say wait until it's on sale. Get it for $30 or $40 cheaper than the original asking price. In a lot of ways, a stereotypical open world adventure that we've seen time and time again with some questionable choices when it comes to both the combat and the story presentation. It's not terrible, it's not horrifically bad, it's not one of those games that I feel like I've regretted playing thus far, but it's still one of those games that I feel like it's not the best, it's still kind of undercooked. It's one of those things that we've seen, been there, done that, it could have been a lot more, but for what it is, it's pretty average. So there you have it, this has been so full lordy. James Bullock, once again, with another video game first impressions. Forspoken for the PlayStation 5 and PC. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go out into the world of Athia and clean up some of these various open world tropes. You know, all those icons that are on the map that you have to complete, especially if you want to 100% the game. All the while having a blast, melting enemies, shooting them out of the sky, and making them say, Oh, Lordy.